Hello and welcome to my next tutorial by Prepomix. This time I will show you how to analyze sliding query in contact based on Archer as well model. So first of all let's create a new model with the default units and uh, then let's import the geometry. Uh, as you can see in this example it's a very simple geometry because the idea here is just to show you uh, how you can sort of verify this kind of technique because basically uh, the sliding where implementation in Prepomex is not um, a calculix feature and this is uh, something implemented uh, directly in Prepomex. Of course it also uses calculix as a fem solver but uh, the calculation of the where is done externally by Prepomex uh, itself um, so with such simple test models with just a few elements uh, uh, you can easily verify the correctness of such calculations so I guess this is a good way to, to test it and uh, also to show you how to uh, define all those uh, features for uh, sliding where in Prepomix. So um, first of all let's uh, define the mesh. Uh, I will create uh, meshing uh, parameters uh, for those uh, two um, parts. So let's select the uh, cube uh, here first and then I will specify the maximum element size which will be uh, six millimeters and uh, then the minimum element size which will be one millimeter because I don't want to have too many elements here and uh, then I will also set one element per edge and one element per curvature and then also enable uh, first order for um, for this part. Uh, now let's define another meshing parameters object uh, for the bottom part and for this one I will specify one and a half millimeters maximum element size. Uh, I will leave the default minimum element size uh, and I will leave all the other settings unchanged. So um, I only changed the, the maximum element size. Uh, so now let's uh, create two extruded mesh uh, objects uh, for those two parts. So for the first one and of course I have to uh, enable uh, the uh, recombination to get um, hexahedral elements. Uh, so this is the, um, the first uh, item and then another one for the uh, bottom part. But in this case I have to select all the uh, faces here to, and to cover them. So I also define a simple uh, recombination and then I can create the mesh and um, see what it looks like. Um, okay, so this is the, the mesh that I obtained. Uh, I wanted to align like this. Uh, this will be a, just a simple example. Uh, the mesh is uh, definitely sufficient for that. So um, now let's proceed to um, the definition of the uh, analysis. So uh, maybe let's start with, uh, with the material definition uh, as I usually do. So um, let's create a new material and uh, I will specify first of all uh, some elastic properties. I will just use the standard uh, Young's modulus uh, for steel and also uh, standard Poisson's ratio. And then I will just uh, add uh, additional properties, sleepwear here. So if you add the sleepwear properties, uh, this will make it possible to calculate uh, arch as well, because this is needed as input. Uh, later I will show you the equation, you will see how those parameters are used. So for this I need to define the hardness in megapascals and the work coefficient. So for the hardness I will specify 100 megapascals and for the work coefficient it will be 0 0.01. So mm, those are the two values that I use uh, in this case. So I can confirm it, uh, I can create a new section, solid section. Uh, with, with this I, I can have um, the, uh, same part, the same material for, for both uh, parts. I don't need to uh, define another one in this case. Uh, so uh, now let's uh, proceed with the definition of, of the model. Uh, but before I go to contact, steps and, and so on, uh, I just need to uh, change the model settings. So I click model edit. And uh, here I need to change the model type from general model to sleepwear model. And this is necessary to um, do the calculations that we need. And here, um, as you can see, we can specify the number of cycles. So, for example, you can uh, define uh, with an amplitude one cycle uh, of, of uh, for example, the indenter being moved. And then you can define the number of cycles here to, to not have to repeat it in the simulation. It will just account for the uh, accumulation of, of wear over the different cycles. But in this case, we only want to have a single cycle. So uh, let's leave the default value here uh, for the cycles increment as well. And I will just disable wear smoothing uh, to be able to directly compare with the analytical results uh, easily. And also I will not enable the BDM remeshing. Uh, this one is meant to um, basically 
perform uh, remeshing below the, the surface of the wear. Uh, in this way, the nodes attached to the surface nodes are also changed and adjusted. Uh, so basically, you can you can remesh the, the, the part uh, when you have large um, deformation due to wear. And that's how it works. Um, and basically, the, the whole approach here is that wear is calculated at the end of the cycle. Uh, and uh, then this is used to deform the mesh for the second cycle. And this is how, how the um, algorithm works. So to calculate the first cycle, calculate the wear, the wear at the end of the first cycle, and then deform the mesh, and then do the second cycle, and so on. And so this is how it works. But in this case, we will only have a single cycle. So, so we won't see the, the effect of accumulation of wear. Uh, but in this case, this is just to, to calculate a single uh, one, one, one cycle of the movement of the indenter and compare it with analytical result with a simple equation without any accumulation. This will be very a simple approach. Of course, it can be easily extended with those parameters and some other uh, settings that we will not cover today. So um, this is uh, everything we need to define the model settings. And then let's proceed to a contact definition. Of course, I need to define some surface interaction. And for this one, I will specify surface behavior. Uh, I will set uh, linear and just modify the stiffness. This is very often done, not, not only in those uh, calculations, but in general, it is quite common uh, to uh, modify the uh, settings of, of the, especially the stiffness uh, for contacts. Uh, as you can see in some of my previous tutorials, uh, such as the one with um, uh, with the um, uh, snap fit connection, you, you will see that it's sometimes really important to adjust those uh, parameters. Uh, in this case, uh, I only change them like this, and I will also define friction, and uh, I can leave the uh, friction coefficient as it is here. I don't need to change uh, anything, um, anything else right now. Uh, so um, this is uh, the whole definition of, sur of the surface interaction, and now uh, let's define the, the contact pair itself. Uh, to make it easier, I can just uh, do the exploded view, and I can create a contact pair with the, of course, with the interac surface interaction property that I, that I just defined. And uh, for the master surface, I will choose the surface of the cube, and uh, for the slave, uh, I will select uh, all those uh, surfaces here. So this is the, the whole definition of um, of the contact here. Uh, let's uh, confirm it. I can disable the exploded view now and uh, we can proceed with the rest of the definition so now mm, we just need to define the steps uh, let's uh, create a new step it will be just a static step at first and um, for this one i will enable geometric linearity and also uh, i won't change any other settings i will just uh, change the, the geometric linearity setting and then, of course, I need to specify some boundary conditions and also the load. So, um, for boundary conditions, uh, I um, specify um, just uh, one BC here. Uh, so, I want to um, keep this uh, face fixed in the first direction, in X, and also in the second direction. Now, I will only leave the third direction free. So, this is the, the first um, boundary condition. And then the other one uh, will be a fixed bottom of this um, of this part. So uh, this is another boundary condition here. And uh, one more thing I need to define uh, is the pressure load. So I will create uniform pressure, apply it to this face here, and uh, it will be one megapascal. And so this is uh, all we need to to define in this case. And now um, I also uh, need to change uh, the output settings a bit. Um, of course, um, I want to see some contact outputs, so I'll create a uh, contact output for field outputs here, uh, with the default settings. And for the work calculation, we'll also need history output uh, with the um, C, this, this, this is contact displacement. Uh, we need this uh, variable um, to um, calculate where. Uh, otherwise, you will get a warning that, that you should add it. Uh, so that's all for the first step. And uh, now we add the second one. This will be the slipwear step, this is a specialized type of step. And for this one, I will also adjust uh, the incrementation settings. Uh, so uh, let me just uh, change the uh, initial time increment is okay. Uh, I will basically just specify the maximum time increment. I, will, I want to have a, just a single increment here uh, because it will be done just one um, one um, cycle, one increment. It will only move uh, in a specified distance. 
uh, within a single increment, uh, then uh, you won't have to account for the accumulation of the wear uh, when comparing with analytical cal calculation. So this is um, why I'm doing this right now, but otherwise you would uh, need to, of course, um, account for more increments, more cycles, uh, possibly, and so on. Uh, so now we have the slipware step, um, and for this one we also need to uh, modify the boundary conditions a bit. So uh, in this case um, I will just have to uh, keep the, the uniform pressure basically, and just modify this boundary condition right here, and uh, in x direction I will set 10 millimeters. So I will make this uh, cube at the top move uh, 10 millimeters to the right, and this way, um, of course, I will um, cause the, the wear of the surface in contact. This is the, the whole um, idea here. Uh, Alright, so uh, now we have uh, the whole setup, basically. Uh, so we can just uh, submit the analysis. Uh, it shouldn't take long to, to run. It's a very simple model, so uh, let's just uh, click run and wait for the results. As you can see, we also get the warning, the, the, the one that I've mentioned, uh, that uh, see this is not defined for each analysis step. So basically we cancel and make it propagate to, to the second step that we defined. And now uh, we should be able to, we have the, the contact output propagated so, so we can just enable, uh, we can just run the analysis and wait for the results. For the, results. the results are available now, it wasn't long, let's open them. So. And now, for now, let's let's set the, the formation to true scale. We want to see how it actually moves, and um, now we have some important outputs here. So maybe let's let's hide the um, history output for now, and we have uh, important um, contact uh, field outputs here. So for example, we have a C press, we have a sliding distance, and we have the wear depth. This is the, the most important uh, output for us because this is what we want to evaluate. So those are the, the results that we get. And uh, first of all, uh, let's uh, maybe mm, check uh, how Prepomex calculates this wear depth, because this is our goal to calculate the wear depth. So if we mm, check the Prepomex documentation, uh, you can see that uh, those um, contact wear calculations based on the r charts model are described here and uh, with the references. So, so you can also see mm, the articles uh, from which those equations are taken and uh, this is also described how it works basically. So this equation is basically the, the most important mm, part for now. So as you can see mm, we take the uh, wear coefficient, uh, we take the hardness and then uh, this is the contact pressure, so basically C press in, when it comes to output variables, and this is the sliding distance. So um, if you take uh, those uh, two outputs and those uh, two inputs, uh, you can calculate the wear depth, and this is the, the output that we want to get. And this is um, summed uh, over all the cycles, so, so this ac accumulates over the, the cycles. But in our case, there's no need to account for that because we have only a single cycle, one increment, and uh, this is easy to, to calculate um, for any uh, node that we select. Uh, so um, now let's go back to Prepomex, uh, and um, to compare um, the results with uh, hand calculations, I will pick some node for now. So uh, let me use the probe tool. And I will check uh, which node is basically, let's say, the easiest one to, to compare because, uh, as you can see, the um, value of the contact pressure is not exactly um, what we specified. It's a bit different. It spreads uh, not so uh, uniformly. So um, some nodes uh, have a bit smaller values, some have a bit uh, larger values. Uh, this is, um, as I said, not so, um, so obvious. So if you go through all the nodes here and at least the, the ones that, that you want to evaluate. Uh, you can uh, basically pick some uh, node, uh, for example, this one uh, has exactly the, the value that we defined, 1 megapascal, so let's keep this one. Um, and uh, if we open the calc path sheet, calc path sheet uh, we can enter the um, uh, values uh, to calculate the wear. So um, we have the wear coefficient, we have the hardness, we have the contact pressure, let's just um, change it to 1. And we have the sliding distance, this is already um, given here because this is just the distance that uh, the cube covered within the single increment. But of course we can also um, go and check this value in, in outputs. Uh, so we, we, we can see it here. Uh, but now if we go to um, wear depth, uh, you can see the, the result here and we can compare it with uh, calc path sheet result. This one is actually easy to compute, so we could take another one where pressure is not equal to 1 megapascal, but this is just to show you how you can 
uh, easily uh, compute the, the world depth using um, this equation uh, on which this whole calculation is based. So this is what Prepamax does internally when it calculates the world depth. Uh, so um, that's the, the first part of the um, verification. Uh, but we can also do something else uh, in addition to just checking uh, some uh, notes manually. We can also go to results, uh, field output, create. We can go to equation and then here uh, you can specify an equation uh, based on the existing result components. So as you can see the syntax is that you need to um, close the, um, this, the outputs in square brackets and then you give the name of the output group sort of and uh, dot and then the component. So in this case, if we want to calculate the wear depth uh, using this equation that you've seen in, 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 the, in the manual and in uh, CalcPad, uh, basically we can um, do it uh, exactly like uh, as, as it's written here. So we can just specify the um, wear coefficient divided by hardness. Uh, so let's do it this way. Uh, so it's uh, the wear coefficient divided by hardness and then we multiply it by mm, the specified um, outputs. So mm, first of all, this is the contact pressure. And as you can see, the output group name is contact. And then the component name is C press. And then it's also multiplied by, uh, by the uh, sliding distance. Uh, so this is sliding uh, distance and the component is all. Uh, so mm, that's, that's how you can Compute it and then we specify the unit which is millimeter and the name it will be uh, let's say uh, where uh, depth uh, may be calculated uh, something like um, like this uh, so uh, let's create that mm, and now if we go to this output we can switch from between this and uh, the actual where depth calculated automatically by prepomex and as you can see this is the same uh, the same result. Of course, now we could also um, go back to, to this um, tool that allows you to create custom field outputs and then we could just subtract one from the other and also see that uh, this is pretty much the same and um, of course with some very, very, very low uh, rounding uh, values, it won't be exactly zero, it will be something to the, um, to the power of let's say minus uh, 30 or something like this. Uh, but basically, this is the same result calculated uh, with, the, with the equation that we use from, uh, from the uh, manual. So I hope that with this simple example, uh, I showed you that um, how you can define uh, sliding wear, how you can calculate it for such a simple model, um, and also basically how you can verify uh, this kind of feature, which is not um, so obvious, not uh, taken directly from Calculix. Of course, if, even if it was from calculates, you could also verify it this way, but this is especially important uh, for features that are not um, so common and uh, are implemented uh, separately, uh, independently of calculates and so on. Uh, so I hope that this simple verification example is not only useful for uh, contact wear specifically, but also in general uh, for various cases where you need to verify the correctness of, of some approach, do some simple tests. This is, uh, in my opinion, uh, very important to, to do it in, in such cases when you are not sure how something works, if something is not, uh, let's say, in completely described in documentation and so on. In this case, we have the, the equation, but you can always verify it. Uh, you can see how it actually works internally, so uh, I think it's pretty useful. Uh, that's it for this Prepromix tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. As always, feel free to ask any questions and uh, suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and uh, see you in the next video.